Short answer, free energy on hand. Other means of naval propulsion have usually relied on having to bring along the fuel in the form of food and manpower for rowing or later with engines in the form of fuel. The sail uses the energy available in the winds surrounding it. Imagine you are on board one of the late great windjammers bringing a large cargo of thousands of tons with you across the waves. You can go across the ocean without the need for bunkering fuel and the mechanical rigging means you have a very small crew compared to the ship's size. You are a serious competitor to the steamships of the era that needs to bunker coal often and need to sail on routes from bunkering harbor to bunkering harbor. This was the great advantage of sails. The sail ships did not need to stop and refuel other than food for the crew and if the crew was small enough it could bring enough for the entire journey. The sail ships were not dependent on a row of bunkering harbors for refueling and could thus sail its entire trip without refuel. This meant that for a period there was serious competition between the late great sail ships and the steam and motor ships. We of course all know how it ended with sail today only being used for recreational use. All great transport vessels use engines today. Engines are just more reliable for arriving on a set schedule and the shipping lanes have a network of bunkering ships to feed the engines. The sail simply suffers from the drawback of intermittent winds. But this is about the advantages that the sail did have. Early on, before the advent of the engine, it was obvious. When the only alternative was rowers, the sail had a huge benefit in reducing the need for manpower and food for this manpower, meaning that a sail ship could carry more cheaper. This was still true at the beginning of the age of engine ships. The mechanical rigging of the great windjammers had greatly reduced the number of men needed to work the rigging. Thus the late great sail ships actually had a smaller need for crew than a steamship. This was a huge advantage and they did not need the infrastructure of bunkering harbors along their routes either meaning they could transport their cargo across the oceans without stops or support harbors. This was used extensively for grain transport from Australia and South America to Britain. Windjammers also had an immense cargo capacity for the time, meaning they could bring along a very large bulk cargo with no cargo capacity being used to bring along fuel. Despite the large and advanced rigging being expensive to make, it was cheaper than the machinery of a steamship and the sail ships could take advantage of the same material improvements. Thus for a long time it was not clear whether there would remain a place for sail in naval transport. This was especially so when the diesel engines arrived greatly improving the abilities of motor ships, but at the same time making it much easier to make efficient combined sail and engine ships that were able to use the wind when available and engine when useful. This made for a period where many ships with both sails and engines were built taking advantage of the best of both worlds. What ended this was the easy availability of refueling, which in the end undermined the advantage of the fuel savings of the sail. But this has also to a great extent limited sea transport to set routes where the fuel infrastructure is available. Gone are the days of the great windjammers and tea clippers racing their cargo on the trade winds across the furthest oceans around Africa. But the advantage of the sail remains. It still offers the ability of transport without the need to bring along fuel or be refueled along the way. 
This might not be on hand on the waves of today, where the intermittency of the wind remains a challenge. But in the great sea of space, where no refueling infrastructure exists, the solar winds might bring solar sailing ships across the void between planets. And in space, the sun always shines and the solar winds always blows. Who knows, maybe one day we might direct beams of sunlight to blow spaceships with solar sails along the paths of our choosing, giving a truly epic renaissance to the age of sails. Space is not really my usual topic, but I liked how it fitted in with a future for the sail, especially given the permanence of solar winds in space. I also like science fiction and was somewhat inspired by a science fiction novella that I read a short time ago, which was very much based on the idea of directing solar beams for traveling more efficiently with solar sails for long stretches. The novella is called Bounty Hunt in the City of the Stars, Stellapolis. The story in itself isn't that good, but the concept of solar paths for solar sails is interesting. If you are interested, there are links in the description below.